This week on Capital City Sports, Gamecock baseball opens the season against VMI. Women's basketball takes on Georgia. This is Capital City Sports. Welcome into Capital City Sports. I'm Hunter Banks, and joining me is Jenny Eiler. The baseball team opened up its season on Friday at home. Carolina was looking to start the season off strong after back-to-back -back national titles. They opened up against VMI in front of a sold-out crowd. Justin Stevens was there, and he has your coverage from opening day. Baseball fans in South Carolina are happy for this day to come as the back-to-back -back national championship baseball team is back in action looking for the three-peat. Pre-game festivities for opening day included the military band, which is very nice since USC plays host to Virginia Military Institute. Coach Tanner seemed also really relaxed going into this one as he was happy to get baseball up and running again. The Gamecocks start out the season ranked number two in the country behind Florida, and only one Gamecock was selected on any of the All-American teams, and that was first baseman Christian Walker. A special ceremony for the 2011 team took place before the game, as Jackie Bradley Jr., Scotty Wingo, and many others were represented for the Gamecocks. Now for some baseball, folks. Opening pitch underway, and USC is looking to start out their season right with a W. In the bottom of the first, Gamecocks try to get things going early as Evan Marzilli gets a lead-up hit for the Gamecocks and stall there. Michael Roth got the starting nod for the Gamecocks and struggled in the second inning as BMI got on the board early as Drew Bryan hits this ball to the outfield to put BMI up 1-0. USC would get things started up in the bottom of the third as Cal Martin hits a single, the freshman by the way. Then Marzilli hits another single to put runners on first and second. Later in the inning, Kobe Calgill throws a lot of pitch and that will score the one run for the Gamecocks, beating it up at one apiece. In the top of the seventh, Tyler Webb comes in for Rock and keeps the outstanding pitching going as he struck out not only one batter, but another to get out of the inning. Later in the bottom of the seventh, the man on first, Tanner English lays down a beautiful bunt that puts two runners on with two hey, outs. But Calgill will also get out of this inning with no harm, and the score still evened up at one. In the bottom of the eighth, Allen Watts comes in for Calgill for BMI, and USC takes advantage of it. First, Marzilli would lay down a perfect bunt that would chase Worthington, cannot make a play on. Then after a sack bunt, LB Dancer would send the ball to shallow center that would bring Marzilli home to make it 2-1 game pass. After striking out four batters on the day, Lugoff Elgin's own Forrest Kumis comes in for the save. And after freshman Grayson Griner threw out a guy at second, Kumis delivers the heat and ends the game for the Gamecocks with a final score of 2-1. Justin Stevens, Capital City Sports. With a successful start to the baseball season, it's been all the talk around campus. Justin and Pat have a lot to say about it too. They're here to break things down for us in the boardroom. Welcome to the boardroom. I'm Pat Cloney. Alongside with me is Justin Stevens. Gamecock Baseball took on Elon this weekend. Justin, pitching looked strong the entire series. Tell me a little about it. The pitching was really strong the entire weekend, and it seems like that's going to be the key for this Gamecock team. In game one, Michael Roth got the start. Of course, he was the number one starter last year. Pitched six innings. I think he had six strikeouts. He struggled in the second a little bit with control, but he got it back then. Relief pitcher Tyler Webb, you saw some action last year also. He's 6'6". He struck out four. 
Then the final two outs, Forrest Kumis came in, mm -hmm. my quarterback from high school. Much <laughs> love to him. And he's going to be the closer this year. Mm -hmm. Last year, the closer was, you know, Matt Price. And now they moved him to the game two starter, of course. in which, you know, he played very well. And the thing about Matt Price is the endurance issue is going to arise. You know, is he going to be able to stay in the games as long as he did? Because, you know, he was just a closer last year. Mm -hmm. But he pitched a good five innings. Then in the, later in the fifth, he kind of struggled a little bit, and that's when they took him out. You know, then they put in Ethan Carter. He was from junior college. He's a junior. And he had four innings pitched, two hits, and six strikeouts also. And then they, you know, closed out the series in game two with a good win also. Mm -hmm. And in game three, we used, game cuts used a lot of pitchers, really a lot of uh, pitching moves. Uh, tell me a little about everyone who played. All right, Colby Holmes was the starter. He was a number two last year. Last year's was Roth, Holmes, then Kumis. Now Kumis is the closer. Price is the number two. Holmes is number three. It's just flip-flopped, you know, the pitching. It's all mm -hmm. there. They just flip-flopped it. The only thing that's, you know, not there is all these release pitchers. But relief pitchers saw a lot of playing time this game because of a monstrous fourth inning hitting when Gamecocks put up seven runs. They're up 8-0, and, you know, Ray Tan was just like, all right, just throw them in. They kept on throwing freshman after freshman, and the only one that really struggled was Drake Thompson. He's a freshman uh, up in Greenville. Mm -hmm. He was a quarterback in high school also, but he came in, uh, kind of struggled. He gave up a uh, one earned run. But other than that, solid pitch from the Gamecocks all weekend. So pitching looks strong. Let's see if we we'll see if we can, you know, fix out that bullpen. Now tell me about a little bit about the defense this weekend. It was pretty solid. Yeah, I would uh game one, really uh really good game to you know watch how the you know the experienced players field the ball, then you know, inexperienced how how the freshmen do on the field. And I saw some good plays by experienced players. Mm -hmm. Christian Walker made a good play at first. LB Dancer, he's from junior college. He was not on the Gamecock roster last year, mm -hmm. but you know, he's played in junior college for two years, so he's got it down. And Michael Roth also made some good plays at the pitching mound. And the only key issue I see for fielding is last year we had that Wingo Mooney connection at shortstop and second base. And you know, now we have two freshmen in there. And they didn't look, you know, all that crisp in game one, game two, but they're, they're sure to turn it around. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see if we can fix out that middle infield later in the season. We'll be right back with some talk about the offense this weekend and a look ahead to next week's series. Coming up after the break, we head back to the Diamond for a classic Saturday doubleheader. And Justin and Pat are in the boardroom to break down the hitting performance that the Gamecocks put on this weekend. Stay with us. Welcome back. The baseball team tried to ride Friday's momentum into the doubleheader Saturday. Jeannie Eiley was there and she has your highlight. Gamecock Baseball saw games two and three in a doubleheader Saturday against VMI at Carolina Stadium. Carolina gets off to a rocky start. A fielding error by second baseman TJ Costin sends VMI's Tarsovich to first. Then Price, in his first start since 2009, hits Morley in the elbow. VMI's got runners on first and second. Price will keep VMI from scoring by sending LeClaire out at first. This will bring up the bottom of the first inning. Evan Marsili's at bat and he'll send it out to shortstop Drew Bryan, who hangs on to the ball, leaving Marsili on base at first. Tanner English at bat and Marsili will go for second. He's safe. He'll go one for four at bat against VMI. Carolina's batters are doing well against this left-handed pitcher. English is still at bat. He bounces it up to Henkel, who shoots it over to Piccarilli at first. Piccarilli misses it, leaving English on first base. Carolina on first and second with Christian Walker at bat. He grounds it out to Drew Bryant, a beautiful play by VMI's defense, but it's not enough to keep Marzilli from reaching home. Game cocks up, one to nothing. Bottom of the third, Rosenberg's on second. Marzilli will fly one out to left field where LeClaire makes the catch. Rosenberg will wait for it and sprint for third base, getting there with plenty of time left to spare. Tanner English at the plate. He knocks one down the foul line, sending him to first. It stays fair and brings Rosenberg in for another run. Carolina 2, BMI 0. 
top of the fourth. Dickinson at bat for VMI. He pops one out to left field where Matthew catches him out, showing that national champion defense at work. Holder up to bat for VMI. He knocks it right back to Price, will snatch it out of the air for the third out. Price gets tired in the top of the sixth, where he walks Tarsevich, sending him to first. Then he hits Morley in the back, putting runners on first and second with no outs in the inning. They'll come out and talk to him while Carter warms up in the bullpen. Price can't get it under control. He walks another batter, bringing Tarsevich in for the first score for VMI, making it 2-1. He'll come out of the game having pitched five innings with no hits and seven strikeouts. Carter comes to the mound to finish out the inning. Carter doesn't disappoint. He strikes out his first batter. Holder gets the first hit of the game, singling out to left field. Morley scores, and Picker really goes for home, but English will throw it in to catcher Dante Rosenberg, who tags him out, keeping the game tied at two runs apiece. Pancake singles to left field. He'll go two for four. Rosenberg knocks it out to the back wall for a double, almost hitting it out of the park and sending Pancake in for another run. Carolina takes the lead 3-2 in the bottom of the sixth. In the top of the ninth, Myers will strike out swinging, Carter strikes out Bryan, and Wynn grounds out to third base where Dancer will make the throw to first, ending the game. Carolina wins this one 3-2. Carolina will go on to win the third game 13-1. Jenny Eiler, Capital City Sports. With the sweep of the weekend series, the Gamecocks must have done something right at the plate. Justin and Pat are in the boardroom, and they're going to break down the hitting performance for us. Welcome back to the boardroom. Justin's here to break down the offense with us now. Justin, game one, the experienced players on the Gamecocks team really stepped it up. Talk to me about that. Yeah, when I was at game one, I saw, you know, the experienced players, you know, batters, you know, one through four in the batting rotation, you know, really knew what they were doing, staying in counts for a long time, then getting really key hits. The big, big player of the game, Evan Marzilli, in my opinion, he had three hits and, you know, stayed in, like I said, stayed in the count, you know, challenging these VMI pitchers. Mm -hmm. And then another person that impressed me was a freshman, English. Which is also, you know, he's he's challenging for you know a starting spot, and in game two he actually got the number two nod. Ray Tanner must have saw something there. Now in game two, Christian Walker really stepped up for the Gamecocks. His experience really took control. Tell me yeah, about that. You know, he was the only one that was named on any All-American team. You know, this season, even pitching. You know, Roth or Price did not get selected for All-American team, and Christian Walker is the only guy in this Game Clock Gamecock club. You know that got, you know, he was a third team All-American, which is very surprising. I mean, you know, Roth and Price last year in the College World Series, mm -hmm. terrific. But these pro, these pro scouts, you know, really like something about Christian Walker, and he showed it in game two. I mean, he's that experienced guy we need in the middle of, you know, the batting order that can come up with a hit when we need it. Mm -hmm. And with all these freshmen batting, that's going to be key later down the road. Now, of course, in Game 3, the Gamecocks offense really exploded, going for seven runs in just the fourth inning. Justin, talk to me about that. You know, I don't know if it was just the Gamecocks were lights out that, that game or, you know, VMI's pitching, you know, finally got to Game 3. And, you know, they, they're not a big school, so they probably, probably didn't have, you know, the greatest pitcher out there. Mm -hmm. But the Gamecocks really did explode. 16 hits, two home runs, one by... LB Dancer, another by TJ Costin, and multiple RBIs for Mar Marzilli and Walker, you know, the experienced guys. And that's what I see, you know, in this series. LB Dancer from junior college, but he's also experienced. Christian Walker and Marzilli, the top three hitters for this program. And LB Dancer can hit the ball lights out. Like, I think right now he's challenging Walker for, to be the best hitter on this team. You know, Walker has more experience in SEC play. But LB Dancer, he might have, you know, the hitting ability to knock more out than Walker this year. And another a freshman that also surprised me in this series, Grayson Griner. He's the catcher, which, you know, a freshman at catching is going to be tough later on in the season. But he showed really good from the field and batting. And in uh, game one, he actually threw out a guy at second base in the ninth inning, you know, right when Forrest Kumis came in. That was 
forced his first out of the game. Mm -hmm. So Grayson Griner really showed me something this series. Great to see the Gamecocks really get off to a good start this season. We'll be right back with predictions and expectations for the rest of the season. Coming up after the break, women's basketball takes on Georgia, and we go back to the boardroom to get a preview of the Elon series. Stay with us. Welcome back. Carolina started off strong last weekend against VMI, but will they be able to play with the same consistency against Elon next weekend? Justin and Pat are in the boardroom to answer this question and many more. Welcome back to the boardroom. We're here to give you some predictions and expectations for the rest of the year. Justin, hitting-wise, one of the big problems for the Gamecocks in this series was figuring out who to put in the two spot. What do you think about the rest of the season? You know, they switch, sw switch swap the two spot, you know, every game, I think, I'm pretty sure. And, you know, like I said, besides, you know, the really experienced players, LB Dancer, Christian Walker, and Evan Marzilli, you know, that two hole is really missing a, you know, consistent guy to put up consecutive hits, get some runs in, you know, you know, produce some batting for the Gamecocks. Mm -hmm. And also a question is that second base spot. Ray Tanner also, you know, said, you know, he doesn't know who's going to start at the second baseman and it's most likely going to be a freshman. I don't Ray Tanner seems to like this freshman class a lot. They were number one recruiting class in the nation. Mm -hmm. So a lot of good players on this class. So I think Tanner will throw in you know, maybe English or someone at that second base spot. Hopefully the Gamecocks can figure that out soon. They really need a key second baseman. Pitching-wise, one of the big questions is, will Matt Price get endurance? You know, he only was able to go five innings this series. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think as the season goes along, you know, more reps, I think Price's arm will eventually gain and gain strength. I think he'll eventually be, you know, a solid number two guy. I think, I think Holmes right now is actually better in Price in the long run as more endurance, you know, later part of the innings, you know, seventh, eighth, ninth, if it were to last that long. But I think Price, Price's stuff early in the game is nice. He was a closer last year, lights out closer, always came in for the save. So Price's stuff is there. He just has to build up that strength. strength. And also, release pitchers. They got a lot of freshmen, and they also lost a key release pitchers last year. John Taylor, the best relief pitcher last year, that sidearm guy, really key, came in after Roth or came in after Colby Holmes and really kept the Gamecocks in the lead and was really key in the College World Series also. So we'll see how that turns around. Right, we can hope we can figure out the pitching, the uh, relief pitching pretty soon. Last but not least, Gamecocks take on Elon this weekend at home. Justin, prediction for this weekend? Well, Elon right now is 4-0. They play in the SOCON conference and they were conference champs last year. They really haven't played anybody yet. Uh, they had a win against, one win against Akron, two wins against George Mason, and you know, a third against North Carolina A&T, which they really haven't, you know, tested anybody. And coming in Columbia, number two, South Carolina, Roth, Price, Holmes, Christian Walker, Marzilli, all these big names, I think, are going to step up for the Gamecocks. And I want to say one game is going to be close, just to give Elon you know, something. Not saying we're going to smash him out every game. Mm. In fact, we didn't smash up VMI every game. Two of the games were one, were one run games. So I'm going to say a sweep for the Gamecocks. But game two or game three, a little bit close there. I'm going to have to agree with you on this one. Elon start, got off to a strong start this year, but the Gamecocks, number two in the nation, we also got off to a strong start against VMI. I just don't think Elon's going to have enough to beat us. Gamecocks sweep the series all three games. And that's going to do it for us. Uh, thank you for watching The Boardroom. He's Justin Stevens. I'm Pat Cloney. We'll see you next time. Baseball was not the only sport to hit Columbia this week. Last Thursday, women's basketball took on a tough Georgia opponent at the Colonial Life Arena. Angel Holland was there, and she's got the plays that you want to see. Last Thursday, women's SEC basketball battled it out at the Colonial Life Arena. 
Carolina Gamecocks versus Georgia Bulldogs. USC, ranked 25th, starts the game out strong with a three-pointer by senior Markeisha Grant, putting the first points of the game on the board. South Carolina with possession again, as number 12, Sharnee Stevens, passes it to Grant, who sinks it in for another three-pointer. By the end of the game, Grant finishes with 11 points. Georgia can't stop this Carolina offense as number 11, Aisha Walker, scores another three, bringing the score 9-0 Carolina. The Bulldogs aren't stopped for long. Number 12, Jasmine Hassel, puts points on the board for Georgia. Sophomore Kalita Miller sinks another ball in, showing the Lady Gamecocks that they're here to play. Georgia's offense keeps the points coming as junior Jasmine James racks up another one for the Bulldogs. Meredith Mitchell for Georgia misses, but number 12 Jasmine Hassel follows up for another score. Lisa Welch passes to senior Lakeisha Sutton who scores for the Gamecocks. Sutton will go on to score 20 points, a game high. At halftime, Lady Gamecocks lead 31 to 29, giving Cocky something to celebrate. Georgia's Anne Marie Armstrong starts the half off by giving Georgia the push they need to take the lead. Gamecock senior Lakeisha Sutton does a layup to fight back against the pushing Georgia offense. With the game tied 59 to 59, Georgia offender Anne Marie Armstrong draws a foul with five seconds left in the game. With George in the lead, Lady Gamecock Walker attempts to make a three-pointer with four seconds left that bounces off just as the game ends. Final score, 61-59, Georgia. Angel Holland, Capital City Sports. That's all for this week. Remember, for all things Gamecock Sports, you can check us out under the Capital City Sports tab on our website, sgtv.sc.edu. And make sure you follow us on Twitter at CCSStaff and find us on Facebook. Just search SGTV. For all of us here at Capital City Sports, I'm Hunter Banks. And I'm Jenny Eiler. Keep it classy, Carolina.